Alleluia, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. I do not know. Hmm. This is not a very flattering statement for our egos, especially in this information age. I do not know. Hmm. We are a people who want to know. We want answers that are understandable and accessible when questions arise, right? Why did this global pandemic happen? I do not know. When will there be a vaccination? I do not know. When will our lives return to normal? I do not know. I do not know can be a very humbling response to give. But friends, there are those times when, when I do not know may, may be not only the correct response, but a blessed response. When we acknowledge our limitations, we can be blessed with the virtue of humility. Humility empties us and opens us to new information. We acknowledge our need for change and assistance. We realize that we don't have everything worked out. You know, when Paul, St. Paul, went to Athens, documented in our first reading for today from the book of Acts, he, he encountered a civilization that knew a lot, really. I mean, Athens, that's where democracy was born. There were advancements made there in science and engineering and literature. It was, it was a city that was dedicated to the Greek goddess Athena, a deity that is associated with several things, but among them, wisdom. Wisdom indeed comes from knowing things, but wisdom also is obtained in knowing that there is far more that we do not know. So someone among the people there in Athens, they wisely dedicated an altar, a, a sacred place to an unknown God. And, and that is where Paul gained his access point. There, through the power of the Holy Spirit, this missionary of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, was able to get a foothold and proclaim that in Jesus, the small, narrow gate had been found that connects to the immense reality of the universal Christ. Yes, Paul came to be a witness to a very big God who became small in Jesus and who revealed the depths of divine power through suffering and service and above all, through love. How was this all possible? Who knows? We do not know. We, however, like Paul, know that Though we do not know everything, we are known by a God who gives us holy wisdom and that we know this God most importantly in the love that Jesus shares. The God that we know in Jesus is not confined to any place, any specific place or time. Yes, I agree, there are many nice places to know this loving God. I mean, who among us hasn't? been in a, a sacred space, a church, a cathedral, a temple, a mosque, and not sense something of the holy. You know, buildings, however, come and go, though. God is bigger than any of these, even all of them combined. God makes his home in all places simultaneously, and not just with one place and one people at a time. You know, in the gospel today, Jesus tells his disciples both then as well as now that if, if we love him, we will keep his commandments. Love of God leads to love of neighbor. What does that mean? Hmm. You know, sometimes it's hard to know specifically what that means, to love neighbor. But we are also promised an advocate the Holy Spirit to lead us in love. Indeed, the spirit of life, the spirit of our resurrected Lord Jesus continues to lead us in truth. He allows us to do the, the applied theology of love in daily life, to, to access the will of a truly big God with large plans and 
infinite creativity. He frees us to make our reverent best guesses about circumstances where there is no playbook and where many concerns may need to be considered and held in tension. You know, I know right now I'm especially feeling for the tough decisions that government officials have, have to make during these days. There are, there are some things that are known. This is true. Science provides numbers that can lead to some answers, but none of this is exact. And there are many instances where leaders still must answer, I do not know when trying to make the right call and protecting on the one hand those that are most vulnerable from the virus, as well as those who are vulnerable to financial ruin during a lockdown economy. Folks, church leaders too are, are seeking to discern what is going to be the most loving thing to do, what is going to be the most life-giving thing to do regarding reopening buildings like this one, where we regularly gather for worship. What do we need to do to get ready to reopen? What will need to change? Will there, will there ever be a time when everything will be as it always was previously? You know, we are not seers. We do not know. We do look again, though, to Jesus, the God who knows us and who promises to lead us with the wisdom of his love. In love, God is revealed. Through love, God's wisdom is known. So we return again and again to love. And I am reminded of the words of John the Elder, who was the traditional author of the Gospel of John. Evidently, he would regularly say, little children love one another. Why, they asked him. And he responded, because it is the commandment of our Lord. And if loving one another were all that were done, it would be enough. Folks, we do not know what form love will take, what direction love will lead us, or what outcome will result. But love is the way of Jesus, and we trust that Jesus will make it right. So in the name of Jesus, the way God's love is most intimately known. Amen.